All right, how's everybody doing? Hotep. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. Um, we are live. It is um, Wednesday, April 25th, 2018. And I wanted to talk about this story here dealing with uh, the African American woman arrested at the Waffle House in uh, Sarah Land. Um, Sarah Land County, Alabama, Sarah Land, Alabama, uh, just north of Mobile, Alabama. I did a broadcast about this um, on Tuesday, but there were some technical difficulties and it didn't come out well, so I have to do it again. So this is a crazy story. I talked about it some uh, Sunday night uh, on my show, the African History Network show. Some of you uh, may have seen that talked about a little bit because we didn't have a lot of details uh, at that time, but more details have come in. There was a uh, press conference that was held on Monday, uh, also Monday, um, uh, April uh, 23rd, there was a press conference held. And uh, I wanted to talk about this. We saw what happened with uh, Starbucks right and a lot of people are still upset about that people talking about boycotting starbucks we know that there uh was a protest uh later sunday uh at this waffle house in the uh in the parking lot from what i understand okay so everybody share this broadcast on your own facebook page invite your friends to tune in also okay and uh we're going to go ahead and uh post this here all right okay so there are a few articles I want to look at. Um, AtlantaBlackStar.com has a good article. Uh, Washington Post has an extensive article about this, and there are a couple from AL.com, Alabama.com. All right. So when we look at the article uh, from AtlantaBlackStar.com, dispute over 50 cent plastic utensils leads to a woman being dragged to ground, arrested at Alabama Waffle House. Dispute over 50 cent plastic utensils leads to a woman being dragged to the ground, arrested at Alabama Waffle House. All right. Um, and then everybody also be sure to uh, register for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K E M E T. Text the word Kemet, K E M E T, the 22828 to sign up for our email newsletter. We send that out a few times a week also. All right. Okay. So when we look at this, um, crazy story out of uh, Sarah Land, uh, Alabama. Uh, look at the article from Washington Post. Outrage continues to grow over harrowing footage of an African-American woman being dragged to the ground and forcefully, forcefully arrested by two Sarah Land police officers at a Waffle House eatery in Alabama over the weekend. So this took place early Sunday morning, April, 20, April 22nd. So a video clip from the April 22nd encounter shows officers wrestle 25-year-old Chakesia Clemens, Chakesia Clemens, to the ground following a dispute over the poor customer service she and her friend received while dining at the popular restaurant. Now, footage of Chakesia Clemens' Sunday morning arrest quickly made its rounds on social media, sparking renewed backlash. Uh, of claims over claims of uh, police racial bias. Okay, and this is just after the video of the two African American men at the Starbucks in Philadelphia, the Spruce Street uh, Philadelphia Starbucks, uh, that took place two weeks ago, April twelfth. Okay, this is on the heels of that, and we saw there was a Starbucks in uh, uh, the Los Angeles area where an African-American man was denied the uh, codes to a bathroom because he didn't purchase anything, but a white man was given the codes to the bathroom who didn't purchase anything either, right? And then we saw the LA Fitness. We saw three, I think it was three employees at the LA Fitness uh, fired over racial discrimination as well. Okay, so several community members gathered for a sit-in uh, Sunday evening in the parking lot uh, of the Waffle House where the incident unfolded according to al.com, alabama.com. Now their protest was ultimately met with resistance from local police. Video of the incident captured by uh, Chakesia Clemens' friend, Kanita Adams, 
show Sarah Lamb police officers briefly chatting with Chiquicia Clemens, 25 years old, before dragging her out of her chair and onto the restaurant floor. She is heard telling the police she was waiting for the uh, phone number to the Waffle House's uh, corporate office so she could file a complaint against one of the waitresses. Now, on social media, her friend Kanita Adams posted on social media, it appears it was Sunday morning, April 22nd, uh, 1049 a.m. Here's what she said. She's given an account of what took place at the Waffle House. Her friend Kanita Adams, who was the one who video recorded the incident, said at approximately 2.15 a.m., myself and my friend Chiquicia Clements entered the Waffle House and proceeded to dine in for food. I then told this white Caucasian uh, woman my order and asked, could I have plastic utensils? She then told me that it would be 50 cent or 50 cents, okay? Laugh, LOL, laughing out loud. I told her that I had just eaten there the night before and they did not charge me 50 cents and so on for the plastic utensils. Shortly after me and my friend continued with our conversation and our rude ass waitress, quote unquote Goldie, decided to put her two cents in our conversation that had nothing to, to even to nothing uh, ever to do with her. Uh, I then read her I did I then read her rights and then canceled my order and walked out. However, my friend stayed behind to get an understanding while I waited outside only to have the cops call on her, uh, while I waited outside to uh, have the cops call uh, called on her and to be treated this way. After tonight, I'm done with Mobile Police, period. I understand the priorities of them doing their job, but tonight wasn't it. They made, uh, they made me and uh, my friend feel unsafe and not welcome to the city of Saralink, okay? So, this was the post, social media post from Kanita Adams, friend of Chiquisa Clemens. Kanita was the one who recorded uh, part of the police encounter, all right? So the article from AtlantaBlackStar.com goes on to say, once on the floor, officers are seen trying to force Chiquisa Clemens' hands behind her back as they work to flip her over and place her under arrest. The young woman's dress is pulled, uh, pulled down during the scuffle, exposing her breasts in the process. Chiquicia Clemens says, what are you doing? The, uh, an officer responds, I'll break your arm. That's what I'm about to do. The entire incident was reportedly preceded by a dispute over plastic utensils, according to Alabama.com, AL.com, uh, which one of the waitresses tried to charge Chiquicia Clemens 50 cents for, uh, for these plastic utensils when she rung up her order. Now, I've never eaten at the Waffle House before. Some people say the food's not that good. But if you go somewhere to place an order for food and they're going to charge you 50 cents for utensils, that's not a place where I'm going to spend my money. That's not a place where I'm going to go, okay? We see that um, African-American coffee shops and, and tea shops have seen a boost in business since the protests against Starbucks. I've posted the article numerous times from shopblack.us, shopblack.us, 47, um, 47 black owned uh, coffee and tea shops that are alternatives to um, Starbucks. Okay, that's gotten thousands of likes uh, on our fan page, the African History Network. So uh, you may see people redirecting dollars to African American restaurants uh, behind this as well. Okay. This is just this is just ridiculous. All right. And we have some updated information that was updated earlier um, on uh, Tuesday, April uh, 24th. Also, that I'm going to share with you as well. OK, so let's continue here. How's everybody doing? We'll come to some of your comments here shortly. All right. So. Uh, the, this violent encounter has added fuel to uh, national scrutiny over the way black Americans are treated by police in public spaces. A controversy sparked by the recent arrest of two African-American men at a Philadelphia Starbucks um, took place uh, April uh, 12th, okay, Thursday, April 12th. 
Uh, and the coffee giant has since promised to close 8,000 of its stores uh, Tuesday, May 29th to educate employees on racial bias and implicit bias, doing implicit bias training. We talked about that. Go watch my broadcast dealing with that. I did a few of them dealing with the Starbucks incident. As for uh, the Waffle, as for a Waffle House, company spokesman Pat Warner said on Monday that information regarding Chakisha Clemens' controversial arrest strongly supports actions taken by police, strongly supports actions taken by police. Here's what uh, spokes, uh, spokesman uh, Pat Warner said in a uh, statement, quote, it's fair to say that the information we have received at this point differs significantly from what has reportedly been attributed to uh, Ms. Clemens and strongly supports the actions taken by the Sarah Lamb Police Department. Uh, Pat Warner told AL.com, Alabama.com in an email statement. She went on to say, quote, the Sarah Lamb Police Department is conducting its own investigation and we encourage you to contact them for additional information. The Sarah Lamb Police Department posted on social media um, and said, uh, the Sarah Lamb Police Department is aware of the arrest at Waffle House and the accompanying video on social media. The situation is being thoroughly reviewed and is under active investigation right now. Our department strives for transparency and we encourage our community to be aware of current events. Sarah Land's Police Safety Director, Chief J.C. West, and the uh, mayor are aware of the situation and are awaiting uh, the results of the investigation. When the facts of the investigation are gathered, we will have a response. So that's a, uh, uh, a response from the Sarah Land Police Department, okay? Now, Chakesia Clemens was ultimately arrested and charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest, which was reported by AL.com. She was released after her mother paid her $1,000 bail. Her mother's name is Chiquita Clemens Howard. Uh, Chiquita Clemens Howard said, quote, the footage shows the story completely. Um, quote, my nerves are very bad, very bad right now. Okay, she called the incident a miscarriage of justice. So that's from April 23rd, that's Monday, April 23rd, uh, AtlantaBlackStar.com. Dispute over 50 cent plastic utensils leads to woman being dragged to the ground, arrested at Waffle House, okay? So if we look at the uh, reporting from um, Washington Post, and it was last, uh, it was updated uh, 10, 15 a.m. Um, Tuesday morning, okay? It had some of the best reporting on this. AL.com, Alabama.com has some reporting. There's more details have come out in this case also, all right? Uh, how's everybody doing? Uh, share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in. If you like the type of information that we share here, be sure to uh, register for the uh, online uh, classes that I teach. Okay, we have a bundle pack. They're all on demand. You can watch them at any time. You can watch them around the world. We have a bundle pack of about 10 of our classes. Uh, it's on sale right now, $60. and includes our most comprehensive one. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Uh, that's a um, uh, 14 hour, seven session online courses, uh, hours of bonus content also, but there are about 10 in this uh, bundle pack. Okay, so check that out. You can also go to AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, register for it there. They're all on demand. You can start watching immediately, watch from around the world. Okay, so when we look at the article from uh, uh, Washington Post, a woman was tackled by officers at, at an Alabama Waffle House. Police are defending the arrest. Police are defending the arrest. This is a more uh, comprehensive article also. Okay, uh, we'll post the link from the one from AtlantaBlackStar.com here on the thread. Remember, most of these videos are available also at our YouTube channel. Okay, on YouTube, it's... Uh, uh, Michael M. Hotep on YouTube, okay? Uh, Michael M. Hotep on YouTube. Check that out. We have a lot of most of these videos there. And uh, they're also on our um, on audio podcast at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com and on iTunes, the African History Network show on iTunes, okay? For the AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, we have uh, 
uh, the po- audio podcast there. Okay, so when we look at the article from uh, Washington Post, uh, it talks about how white police officers uh, wrestled a black woman to the ground in the Waffle House on Sunday, exposing the breast during the struggle and prompting comparisons to the arrest of two African-American men at the Philadelphia Starbucks uh, this month as well. All right. Uh, yet yeah, local police uh, local police maintain that the three officers involved follow protocol and said the department is, quote, not choosing to take any action at this time, end quote. So not choosing to take any disciplinary action at this time against these three officers. At a news conference Monday afternoon, officials said the woman and her friend, the woman, Chakesia Clemens, 25 years old, and her friend, Kanita Adams, um, were acting belligerent inside the Waffle House in Saraland, which is north of Mobile, Alabama. They said they were drunkenly yelling profanities at restaurant employees and threatening to return with a gun and, quote, shoot this place up, end quote. Okay, so the incident, which was caught on video that went viral, sparked a sit-in at the at the store Sunday afternoon and led to the responses from the NAACP and some celebrities, even as Waffle House officials contested the details of the family story. Once again, it, it appears that the majority of this, because there's some other details I'm going to get to, it appears the majority of this was precipitated by them being charged 50 cents for some plastic utensils. Okay, once again, I don't eat at the Waffle House. You can do what you want to do, but if I'm somewhere that's going to charge me 50 cents for plastic utensils, I'm not eating there, period. That's just all this to it. That's ridiculous. So the the video shows Chiquisa Clemens, 25, sitting uh, on a chair at the diner as one of the officers grabs, grabs her neck and right wrist in an attempt to subdue her. Clemens describes a disagreement with a store employee that triggered the police response. She soon appears to realize that 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 uh, her two her two top she is wearing is slipping, and she raises her arms to cover her bus line, etc. Okay, uh, and she says, "You're not going to grab on me like that." Uh, no, uh, she tells the officer who appears to speak to another officer off camera. Okay, so now. Um, Sarah Land police officials said an investigation into Clemens' arrest and the officer's conduct began early Sunday. Uh, now, at the news conference, um, the, so this was the news conference uh, on Monday. There was a news conference held Monday, okay? Um, at the news conference, um, Detective Colette Little, Detective Colette Little, uh, played the 911 call made by a Waffle House employee as well as surveillance footage from inside the restaurant. According to the 911 call, which was played around 2.30 a.m., uh, which, which, which was placed around 2.30 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning, okay, according to the 911 call, the employee uh, said she was told by one of her managers to call the police because two African-American females and one African-American male had entered the restaurant with alcohol, had entered the restaurant with alcohol, okay? Which is a problem right there. And I'll talk about why. The customers were told that they were not allowed to drink the alcohol inside, the employee told the dispatcher. Several surveillance clips from different angles, okay, very important here. Several surveillance clips from different angles show two women identified as Chiquicia Clemens and Kanita Adams sitting down at a table. An unidentified male had previously entered the Waffle House and went to the restroom before joining the women at their table. After a few minutes, um, uh, Detective Colette Little said, quote, the situation escalates between the patrons at the table and the employees, end quote. Now, the Waffle House employees asked uh, Clemens and Adams and their male companion to leave the restaurant. Adams and the man can be seen briefly leaving the restaurant. Uh, Kanita Adams and the, the man that was with them can be seen briefly leaving the Waffle House. Clemens reaches the door, then walks back to her booth to re-engage with the employees. Adams soon returns. The clips show, the video surveillance clips show. 
Soon the three officers arrive one by one and one of the frames Clemens is seen being taken to the floor. Uh, Detective Colette Little said uh, that during the arrest, the officers were trying to handcuff uh, Chiquisha Clemens, quote, behind her back, which again is standard procedure, end quote. Detective Colette Little said that one of the officers asked um, Kanita Adams, quote, if she will, as her friend, if she will assist in pulling Miss Clemens' shirt back up, and Miss Adams refuses, end quote. The male companion that was with them then, quote, asked permission to pull, pull her dress up, and the female gives him permission, end quote. At that point, Chiquicia Clemens, Kanita Adams, the male friend, and the three officers leave the Waffle House. Detective Colette Little at the press conference on Monday said that when the police arrived, uh, Chiquicia Clemens, quote, appeared to be intoxicated, end quote. Detective Colette Little said that uh, Clemens, quote, got sick, end quote, after being booked. An image showed uh, Chiquicia Clemens at the police station holding a trash can up to her face. Detective Brian Mims said as part of the police investigation, he reached out to Chiquicia Clemens and Kanita Adams to interview them. Clemens did not appear for a scheduled interview. Attempts to reach Kanita, Kanita Adams were unsuccessful. Detective Brian Mims said he interviewed the three officers as well as witnesses from inside the Waffle House, including six employees and one customer. Six employees and one customer. Of those witnesses, two were African American, four were female, he said. All witnesses confirmed that uh, Chiquicia Clemens and her friends smelled of alcohol and appeared drunk. One person brought a drink believed to be alcoholic into the restaurant into the restaurant, Detective Brian Mim said. Now, first of all, one, if you know anybody who's owned a restaurant, and I've known people who own restaurants, I know people who own franchises, like McDonald's franchises, Subway franchises, they do not allow you to bring, number one, food from outside into the establishment and eat the food. They do not allow you to bring alcoholic beverages inside. There, there, there are restrictions on consuming alcoholic beverages. Number one, you can't sit up in an establishment that does not serve alcohol consuming alcoholic beverages. That's illegal. You can't walk down the street consuming alcoholic beverages. Usually the ordinance is against that, okay? Uh, establishments that don't serve as alcohol, you're not allowed to bring your own. This is not BYOB, okay? So if they walk in with alcoholic beverages, an establishment a reputable establishment is going to tell them, hey, you can't you can't bring that inside. You can't drink that outside. Take that outside. OK, if they persist, they're going to be asked to leave. All right. Uh, and then also, even if it's an establishment that sells alcohol, it's a restaurant. They sell alcohol. They don't allow you to bring your own alcohol inside. They want you to buy theirs. OK, so here's why restaurants don't allow you to consume food or alcohol things like that from outside okay if there's a bottle of water establishment may allow you to do that um number one if you consume something especially food okay but if you consume something in that establishment that you brought from outside and you get sick in that establishment ems is called they pull you out right People see them taking you out. They think it's something that you ate there at the restaurant, something the restaurant served you. They don't know you brought food from outside. So establishments usually don't allow McDonald's or Burger King, restaurants, Red Lobster, whatever. They don't usually allow you to bring outside food inside and consume it there. No, you have to buy their food or, or leave. Okay, it's not, the, it's not the food court. A restaurant is not the food court. Okay, at the mall. All right, so it's important for people to understand this. Okay, now, um, Karen said, I'm sorry, but did they, the employees, see the alcoholic beverages? Uh, it appears they did, but also, uh, it appears they did. It appears they did. The other thing is, um, there are also uh, ordinances in various cities about public intoxication. That's another thing. Now, I don't know how drunk they were. Apparently, they walked in on their own power, okay? 
But the other thing is, is that if you are uh, appear to be too intoxicated, if you appear to be about to pass out, things like this, you're not allowed in certain establishments. They, they, they'll ask you to leave. Their, their ordinance is against public intoxication as well. Okay. It's like a lot of, uh, it's just like at clubs. I had a friend that owned a club here in Detroit. I mean, I know people that own businesses, restaurants, clubs, things like this. They don't allow people to come into the establishment that's too drunk, stumbling, things like this. Their, their laws are also against public intoxication as well. Okay, so, um, so Detective Mem said he interviewed the three officers as well as witnesses from inside the Waffle House, including six employees and one customer. Okay, um, all witnesses confirmed that uh, Clemens and her friends smelled of alcohol and appeared drunk. One person brought a drink believed to be an alcohol uh, to believe believed to be alcoholic into the restaurant. So apparently they saw it. One person brought a drink believed to be alcoholic into the restaurant. Detective Mem said. Now, the witnesses said uh, Clemens and Adams loudly shouted profanities at the Waffle House employees. One of them shouted, quote, I'll come over this counter, end quote, and threatened to beat the employee, saying, quote, B, I'm going to have your job. You ain't going to be here tomorrow, end quote. One of the witnesses, according to Detective Brian Mims, reported hearing, quote, I may have a gun. I may have anything. I can come back here and shoot this place up if I need to, end quote. Witnesses said Chakesia Clemens refused to comply with the officers on multiple occasions. Uh, Detective Brian Mem said she appeared to be intoxicated. Uh, now, Mem said that from the investigation, race was not a factor in Clemens' arrest or in her conversations with the Waffle House employees. Quote, it was based solely on the fact that they were asked to take their beverages out and not consume them on the premises based on Waffle House's policy, end quote. They did not feel it was related to any circumstances, Detective Brian Mim said. Now, Detective Colette Little at the press conference on Monday acknowledged that one of the officers told Chakesia Clemens that he could uh, break her arm during the arrest if she did not cooperate. Detective Collette Little said it was, quote, a cause and effect statement rather than a threat, rather than a threat, end quote. She said it's common when an officer is using a technique to take a subject into custody that the force used could possibly create an injury. Sound like a threat to me. Now, the arrest at the Waffle House comes as companies face questions about racial profiling and law enforcement responses. Less than two weeks ago, we saw what happened at the Starbucks when the uh, white, uh, white manager called the police uh, with a loitering complaint against two African-Americans who have been sitting in the store for two minutes, hadn't purchased anything yet. White people sitting around them, some of them hadn't purchased anything, they weren't harassed. The men were arrested in the following days, both the executive of Starbucks uh, uh, Kevin Johnson and um, uh, Philadelphia's police commissioner Richard Ross apologized. Okay, now uh, Chakisha Clemens' father, his name is Lamar Howard. He told ABC News on Monday that his daughter deserved an apology, quote, just like the two men in the Starbucks. End quote. Now it, it was unclear whether he meant an apology from Waffle House officials, the Sarah Land Police Department, or both. Uh, Lamar Howard uh, could not be immediately reached for comment. Chakisha Clemens' mother, Chiquita Clemens Howard, told AL.com, Alabama.com, that the Waffle House dispute arose after her daughter refused to pay an extra 50 cents for plastic utensils. So it appears this was part of it. it may not been have not may not have been the only dispute, but it, but it appears this was part of part of the dispute. So Detective Brian Mims, the police detective, said you the, said utensil, uh, the, the utensil issue did come up in the confrontation. Quote, the employee conveyed the message that I don't know how old the policy is, but it is now customary that if you ask for plastic utensils to dine in only, that there is a 50 cent charge, end quote, Detective Brian Mims said. Now, when they had a discussion about it between the patrons and the staff, they did provide the utensils before they uh, before they took their order. 
and they were not going to be charged for it, okay? Chakisha Chiquish, Clemens' mother uh, uh, told uh, the news outlet, I think this was Alabama.com, AL.com, uh, Chiquita Clemens Howard is her name. She told AL.com that the Waffle House employees did not even ask her daughter to leave. This is what she Quote, she's waiting for them to give her the district manager's card so she could file a complaint on one of the waitresses. When they went to get the card, that's when the police showed up. The officer should have come in and said, we need you to leave, okay? Now, uh, Chiquisha Clemens and her mother could not be reached for comment at the time this article was posted, 1045 a.m. Tuesday morning, April 24th. Waffle House restaurants provide plastic flatware on request at no charge, company spokesman Pat Warner told the Washington Post on Monday. So wait a second. If the company spokesperson is saying that Waffle House restaurants provide plastic wear, plastic flatware, plastic utensils on request at no charge, then why would they be in charge 50 cents for the plastic utensils? If, if the company spokes, spokesperson is saying that there's no charge for plastic utensils, why would they be in charge 50 cents for plastic utensils? And the other question is, who set the price at 50 cents? If a price was set at 50 cents, that means somewhere there was this policy put in place. Why, if the company spokesperson is saying, no, there's no charge for plastic wear? So once again, this is why, this is one of the reasons why people are pissed off. They're pissed off at the video of, uh, it appears, of this woman being roughed up. Now, it also, it also appeared to me, watching the video, she was intoxicated because I've dealt with a lot of drunk people before. I used to work at a club before. I've dealt with a lot of drunk people. But still, to me, that didn't justify the way she was being, it didn't justify the way she was being treated. And also, I did not see the officers explaining to her what she did, why she was being arrested, things like this. Now, Waffle, the Waffle House said in a statement that police intervention was appropriate. Quote, the information we have received at this point differs significantly from what was reportedly, what has reportedly been attributed to Ms. Clemens, end quote, the company said. The mobile, ch the mobile chapter of the NAACP, Mobile Alabama chapter of the NAACP, told AL.com, Alabama.com, it was also gathering information about the incident. Quote, in light of the current situation in our country, such as the arrest of two young African-American men at a Philadelphia Starbucks coffee shop, we felt it was important for our members to get a firsthand account of the incident, which has now gone viral on social media locally and across the country, end quote, said David Smith, who's the chapter president of the Mobile um, chapter of the NAACP. All right. Now, for, so people understand. In a lot of these small towns across the country, the NAACP is one of the few, if not the only organization that African Americans have that are going to investigate things like this, actually investigate, not just have a protest, but actually investigate what happened, okay? And also it's important to understand the, these local chapters of NAACP, most of those positions they have, if not all of them, those are volunteer positions. People don't get paid to do that. Now, you've had some celebrities that went to weigh in on this incident. Rapper Ch Chance the Rapper out of Chicago. He does a lot of good community work, gives donations for education, things like this, right? Bit young, conscious brother. He weighed in on Monday, um, April, uh, 20, April 23rd. He weighed in on Monday, April 23rd on this. He posted on uh, Twitter. And he said, um, protect our women. This is wrong. This is unjust. And this happens to a lot of women when there are no cameras around. Stand with our women. Defend their voice and their right to ask why they're being handled, being removed, being choked, be infuriated, be willing to fight. OK, this is Chance the Rapper. Follow him on Twitter at Chance the Rapper, at Chance the Rapper on Twitter. Now, on the same day that this incident took place, 
April 20, Sunday, April 22nd, you had a gunman who killed, uh, that's right, King. He had a gunman who killed four uh, people with a AR style, uh, AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle at a Waffle House outside of Nashville, Tennessee, okay, and fled the scene. He was later caught. You know, he was later caught. He wasn't killed. He was taken alive. The shooting in Nashville and the arrest in Alabama culminated in a blistering few hours for the iconic Southern breakfast chain. According to his website, Waffle House has been in operation since 1955. It's more than 1,500 restaurants are open 24 hours a day, year long. Never, I've never eaten at a Waffle House before. Don't plan to. You can do what you want to do, but uh, a lot of African Americans are talking about redirecting dollars to african-american owned establishments also okay so that's what we know at this point in time al.com has an article from uh updated april 23rd outrage growing over black women's arrest in alabama waffle house by white police officers okay um and then they have a um uh, uh another article dealing with how the um uh, information from the let's see what is it it's, um the waffle, uh, the waffle house is saying that uh information about alabama's arrest strongly supports police actions that's another article from alabama.com april 23rd monday april 23rd um as well okay all right let's go to some of your comments here uh sound is breaking up sound is breaking up hopefully it'll clear up hopefully this sound to clear up Hopefully the sound will clear up here. I'm not sure why it's breaking up. Okay, share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in. Okay. Also, if you like the information we share uh, at the African History Network, you can, you can also uh, donate to the African History Network uh, through PayPal, and uh, we'll post the link. Uh, we'll post a link here. It's a uh, PayPal dot me. PayPal dot me. PayPal dot me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show on PayPal. That's for the African History Network, okay? Uh, let's go to this here. Let's see, let's post this. Then we'll come to some of your comments. All right. So this is a crazy, crazy story. Uh, people that know me know I'm not a drinker. I don't drink alcohol. Oftentimes, when bad things happen, alcohol or drugs are involved. Okay. Uh, you definitely don't want to be intoxicated uh, out in public. Uh, it's usually not uh, uh, usually not a good uh, end result. Okay. Um, okay. Glenda said, out of respect, they could have taken her outside and waited for a female officer. Okay. Um, all right, sound is breaking up. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with the sound. Okay, Marcus said Waffle, Waffle House is nasty. NAACP in Kentucky is non existent. Okay, in the entire state of Kentucky, there's no NAACP in the entire state of Kentucky. Uh, Karen Wilson said, I'm sorry, sorry I'm not buying this. I was in the Navy station in Pensacola, trained in Mobile. On several occasions, nothing has changed. It was hard to even get someone to even wait on me. Uh, to this day, I have not been to another Waffle House. It's been almost 40 years. Okay. Well, they have surveillance footage from different angles. Um, so there's more, there's more to the story than just a one minute, 30 second video as well. Yeah, that's why I'm dealing with everything that we know basically at this point in time. Um, let's see. All right. So I encourage people to read these articles and look at the other information that has come out since the one minute, 30 second video was recorded and posted. All right. Um, Let's see here. Okay, I don't know what's uh, um, 
I don't know what's wrong with the audio. Audio's not clearing up. Okay, your vets said, I find it hard to believe that if she was intoxicated, they would not have charged her as well. Uh, why not give a breath, breath a breathalyzer test to confirm if she was truly uh, drunk? I don't know. I don't know if the toxicology report was done. I don't know if a breathalyzer was done later at the police station. Uh, we, do, we do know she was charged with uh, disorderly conduct. Um, she was charged with disorderly conduct, released on one thousand dollar bail, and um, let me see. Yeah, she was. Um, it was. Uh, I think the charged with disorderly conduct here. Okay. Yeah, and, and uh, the uh, it was one thousand uh, dollar bail she was released on. Okay. okay. Let me see. Uh, AtlantaBlackStar.com has it. Uh, she was charged with disorderly conduct. Or is this an arrest? I don't know if uh, I don't know if a breathalyzer was given. Okay, uh, I don't know. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, audio's acting up. We got to get out of here. Um, be sure to visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Got a lot of information there for you. My DVD presentations are there. We have a forty-eight hour sale. We have an eight DVD bundle pack, the Black Panther bundle pack. Uh, it's an DVD bundle pack. Uh, you get uh, uh, eight of my presentations. It's on sale right now, eighty dollars. Also, three documentaries in there: uh, the eighteen oh four documentary, Elementary Genocide Three, Black Friday Part Two. It's available right now at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We'll post the link here. Okay, and uh, you keep posting your questions. We'll answer some of your questions offline. Okay, all right. Gotta get out of here. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior. Uh, I'm speaking in Detroit, uh, uh, Oak Park, Michigan, Friday, April 27th, uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, doing a couple of presentations then with the film Black Panther. We just posted information there. It's also on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay. All right. Right now it's correct own behavior. It's not over until we win. We'll talk to you next time. Wakanda forever. Peace. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys. Talk to you later.